questions um, it's often we don't get to do that we just uh, typically have more folks on so it's nice to be able to go around and really introduce everyone so welcome um, so maybe what I'll just start with since we have a few new people um, or recent uh, folks that have started calling in just to kind of give a quick introduction to Arapic and this team um, oops Okay, so I think you just muted yourself, John, accidentally, which is quite an impressive feat these days. <laughs> um, so there's a link in the chat box that'll take you to a description of the teams, team. Um, but to start with, um, IRPIC uh, was created in 1984 as part of the Arctic Research Policy Act. And it's a really great place where all kinds of different Arctic researchers and other people um, can come together to learn about some of the federal, U.S. federal um, Arctic research that's taking place um, and also how to collaborate on those and how to come up with new collaborations, um, new ideas, and kind of move the needle and the, the pace forward on some of the problems that uh, research is trying to address, as well as the priorities of communities across the Arctic are trying to address um, with the changes that we're seeing um, and the needs that we all have. Um, so for this team, uh, what we try to do is talk about topics um, that relate to strengthening coastal community resilience. Um, it's a pretty broad group of topics that we have in this team that cover um, indigenous knowledge, um, environmental monitoring, uh, changes in species distribution, um, just understanding the response of the Arctic in general. Um, so there's a lot of topics and you can kind of explore that by just clicking on that the team uh, link there on the, the page that I sent. So Colleen, do you have anything you want to add to as far as a general introduction at this point? No, I think you did a great job. Thanks, John. Um, so Meredith, do we have anything else that we want to introduce um, before we turn it over to Simon Stevenson to kind of give us an update on the next Arctic research plan? No, um, I will turn it over to Simon, who used to be a co-lead for the Coastal Resilience Collaboration team. and is in the process of retiring from NSF. Um, Y'all can uh, find more information about his retirement party uh, on the Arabic website. Um, but we thought that it would be really appropriate for Simon as also the head of the plan development steering group to come and speak to this team about where the Arctic research plan is, um, how it's been developed and uh, what the next steps are. So I will go ahead and share my screen and turn it over to Simon. All right, thanks. Uh, can you hear me okay? My little yellow box is showing up so somebody can hear me. Um, so the slides are gonna take us all the way through sort of IOPIC. So I'm gonna race through, uh, or, unless you wanna start there and I'll, do you wanna start at the beginning and I'll sort of race through them. Uh, okay, so next slide. Um, and, you know, um, we've, we've only got 15 minutes, but I see that we have 20 minutes of Q&A after I've spoken and Daniel's spoken, so um, we can use some of that. So, you know, what, what is IOPIC? Um, let's go to the next slide. That's the committee. Next slide. Um, so IOPIC is this interagency committee. It sits under a whole host of other bodies in the federal government. Interagency committees are a, a, a really important tool, the way the agencies work together to solve problems, because almost all of the issues that they face have some sort of overlap with some other agency, some other department. And so it's really important. This is no less so in the area of science and technology. And so IOPIC is one of quite a few committees uh, that try to pull the agencies together to, to sort of make a much more coherent effort than just a bunch of agencies working separately. Next slide. And these are the member uh, agencies of IOPIC, there will not be a quiz. Next slide. Um, so this is the current plan that we're working on. Um, and you see uh, at one o'clock, the slice through is the 
policy drivers, global, uh, the role of the Arctic in the global system, security, uh, that's pretty broadly defined in this plan from uh, national security to food security, stewardship, uh, stewardship of Arctic lands and Arctic waters, um, and the well-being of residents. So it's not just residents, but it's well-being of residents, their health. Uh, and so those are sort of policy drivers. They're well placed in the uh, in uh, the national policies for for uh, for Arctic and also for Arctic research. So um, uh, you'll see that they they flow into the current plan. So this plan with coastal resilience there at around about ten o'clock is um, very focused on the you know the natural system uh, less less so on the human at, at six o'clock. This health and well-being. Um, and it also reflects uh, considerable strengths of the agencies uh, in, uh, in in these broader sort of natural systems. There are actually you know, relatively few agencies that uh, support um, the social system, but there's obviously quite a few that do health uh, and and well-being. So um, so we'll go to the next slide. Um, this was another outcome of IOPIC's efforts. Actually, the, the, one of their very first efforts was a principles of conducting research in the Arctic. But these were updated, uh, I think, last year or year before, I think. And, uh, and so um, uh, this is an, another outcome of IOPIC's uh, communication and, and work. Uh, and so, uh, uh, and this is readily findable on the IOPIC website. Next slide. So this is the process that we're going through to develop the current plan. Um, and we're basically uh, in the drafting phase. We're just coming hopefully out of it. Uh, we have, I think, one more set of comments. The agencies have seen it um, a couple of times in the drafting phase, just make comments. Uh, and we're now back at the White House for their final look. Um, I'll just point to the uh, uh, box on the the left of drafting, the drafting central box, the, the, the development phase, really, really important. Um, so there was, a, uh, there was a, a workshop held. In fact, there was uh, outreach before the workshop, uh, then the workshop in, in uh, September. Um, so we've had a, actually already a lot of input from individuals. Uh, we took input that was already documented in um, uh, state plans, uh, research plans. There were little mini workshops held around the academic community, um, sort of on a regional basis. Uh, there was also uh, reports and plans and documents uh, that indigenous communities and uh, regional organizations have put together. And so sort of all of those things were put together uh, and synthesized as input to that workshop. Um, so we feel we're we're we're, we're really uh, um, sort of on a good track of getting a good input from uh, both the region and uh, and scientists who studied the region into this drafting phase. And the next piece of the puzzle uh, will be a public comment period. Um, and so uh, this is actually open to feds as well. But you know, if you're if you're a member of the public, please take a good look at the, the plan. And, um, and and comment as you as you see fit. So next slide. So this is the this is the gang. Uh, you know, Larry uh, at OSDP is our is our leader. Um, with Nikush has been the plan development director, working very very closely uh, with Larry. Serena did a fantastic job. She was the she was the agent who. Did all those summaries of all the um, the other documents that formed the input to the workshop, and Daniel Stickman will be given a, a better introduction later. Um, but we've we've uh, basically recognized that indigenous engagement is a really important piece going ahead. Next slide. So this is the slide I actually want to dwell on a little bit. Um, because this is the sort of the structure um, 
And you'll see this when the plan gets released. Um, and this is in the public domain. Uh, the, the, the written details are not yet in the public domain, but this is you know, worth, uh, worth dwelling on. I've sort of raced here. Um, so you'll see the policy drivers are in fact the same ones. I am not even sure we've changed a word and we might've changed a couple of words, but uh, policy drivers at the top, well-being, stewardship, security, and Arctic global systems. So uh, as I said before, well grounded in, uh, in actually two, two or three decades of uh, Arctic work. Um, and that's, uh, and, and, and then they should be, they're slow, you know, slow moving, slowly developing. Um, um, and, and we're, we're suggesting we leave them the same. Then come the priorities, and these look really quite different from the current uh, priorities. These are much more focused on what at NSF we now call convergence, which is bringing together different scientific disciplines or research uh, areas to solve real world problems, but it's still in the domain of research. We're not talking about solving the problems themselves. We're talking about doing research to inform uh, communities, society, the state, you know, whoever is the actor, and actually other federal agencies to help solve these problems together. And to be honest with you, this coastal, re, uh, coastal uh, group, uh, collaboration team, was sort of an early, an early attempt at what now are uh, at least three of the four, uh, two of the three, uh, two of the four, priority areas. So you see coastal uh, resilience and health is still is still there. Uh, it's really important. It's just not going to go away. It's, it's so important for IOPIC to make a contribution, um, you know, in, in that area. Uh, and then, and then, uh, and we've heard this loud and clear from really all segments of the workshop participants, people wanted to see a very strong uh, piece that did the natural sciences that are so prevalent in the current plan, um, but stay there, uh, do the integrative work uh, for Arctic systems and how the Arctic system functions in the uh, global and how the global influences changes in the Arctic system. So this is, this is sort of bread and butter of many of the basic research agencies, you know, us at NSF and uh, and, uh, and NASA and DOE, uh, elements of DOI and uh, NOAA, of course. Uh, so this is, this is sort of what we, we do a lot, but we also wanted to uh, listen to that input. And then the next two areas are sort of new. And these are the ones that are perhaps picking up on uh, uh, the, uh, I'm not, the, the, the model that, we, that we've attempted with this, with this, this current coastal collaboration team, sustainable economies and livelihoods and risk management. And these are, all the areas are actually currently written in a very broad way. And you'll see that when the plan comes out, um, if you haven't already seen a picture of Fed. Um, and, uh, and, and so these are sort of trying to now, you know, the, as a priority, trying to marshal the, the federal resources to, to study uh, what is currently going on, what is currently understood, landscape out the activities that are going on um, in, these, in these two areas. They all overlap, and that's going to be a bit of a challenge for IOPA going on. on. Uh, but just as the, the current collaboration teams hold joint meetings, I could see uh, these, uh, these, these groups sort of working together um, because some of the risk management is managed by uh, sustainable economies, which has a, a sort of very large uh, element of infrastructure to it or resource development. And, and likewise, uh, the, the changing Arctic system, um, and of course, community health and resilience are also related to economies and managing risk. Underneath, uh, on the bottom layer, are cross-cutting efforts that will show up in all of the priority areas. Um, and so I'll, I'll just read them out for some of you on the phone. Co-production of knowledge and indigenous-led research is one cross-cutting area. Data management is another. Monitoring, observing, modeling, and prediction um, is another. Education and then technology. Uh, so there's five cross-cutting uh, foundational areas is all what, all what we're calling them. Um, 
so could you go to the next slide? Just so I have. Okay, go back again then. Well, I will just dwell on this for the people who have it up on their screens. Um, what we're doing now, though, is also talking about what IARPIC will look like going forward when this new plan comes into play in 2022. And our, our best model of what IARPIC will look like is there will be a focus on this plan. This plan is narrower than the previous plan. It's focused on a smaller number of priority areas because our bosses told us to. Uh, they said, you know, nine, uh, nine with one being actually three. Uh, so 12, you know, they said that's sort of too much. I think it's not enough, but uh, they're the bosses. So we do what they tell us. So we've narrowed in, but IOPIC is not necessarily going forward defined by its plan. Um, it was, but going forward, I think we can have a conversation about it's bigger than the plan now. We're sort of going into another phase of, of what IOPIC ha uh, has been. And so our, our model is that the collaboration teams that currently exist will, will continue to exist, particularly if they want to exist. Uh, if they feel that they want to you know, focus on these priority areas and they, you know, they dismantle and focus on them, that's fine too. But our, our expectation is that the current collaboration teams will continue to exist. Um, and so, uh, so I think we'll have you know, efforts focused on, these, on, the, on executing the plan but it'll also have uh, continued efforts to to try to 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 try to uh, keep going the collaboration across the much broader spectrum of what the federal government is funding in terms of research in the Arctic, um, and uh, and I, I just wanted to to say that because we're there is an implementation uh, piece of the plan. Uh, that you will see when it comes out for public comment. Um, it is focused on the implementation of the plan, not the whole of IOPIC. But you will see uh, this year, uh, going through 2021, this year we will be continuing to have a conversation about what IOPIC should be doing, what it, what it will look like. And I suspect we'll have, you know, uh, this, is, you know this is our sneaky way of doing more than the, our bosses were going to let us do. Uh, I think we'll keep a lot going. There'll be a resource issue there of how do you know how do we lead all these groups? How do they work together? Uh, you know how how many Merediths can we pull into this picture? Because uh, that you know their efforts are so important to helping the 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 the, the, the co chairs of each group. Hold up here. And um, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this is the comment period, uh, March to June. Uh, hopefully missing most of the um, uh, subsistence hunting, or at least the early part of subsistence hunting. Next slide. And uh, yeah, this is just more about IOPIC. So I think that's, um, we may have a couple of minutes for Questions, or we come back to them uh, in the in the broader comment period at the end. Simon, maybe um, if you can, do we know if there's a new date in March when the public comment period will open, or is that still being scheduled? Um, uh, Sarah might know, but I th I think it's safe to say that uh, we'll let OMB take the time that they. So OMB are at the White House Office of Management and Budget, and uh, we, we will be ready to go very soon after they've cleared the plan. Um, so like, I think a few days is, is uh, you know, it has to be set up in the, in the new, uh, in, in the Federal Register you know, notice. But, um, so I think we're, you know, maybe a week away uh, or, you know, maybe a couple of weeks away. So early, early in, in March is the plan. Okay, well, great. Thanks for that. Um, Meredith, did we want to pause here and 
have any discussion or I can't remember what is next on your agenda there. Yeah, I had it um, moving right into um, just introducing Danielle and then I think um, kind of having discussion, opening it up for questions for people um, on the plan, the development of the plan and also um, the engagement of, of how we move through the public comment period and who we should be reaching out to, especially with Danielle on the line to help us with that process. So um, Danielle, I will turn it over to you and we're so happy to have you here. Um, we went through the first uh, public uh, review in the federal register notice period without um, someone specifically focusing on indigenous engagement and it was a struggle. Um, and so it's been really great to have someone come on board, especially Danielle. Um, who is who is focusing on on that part of the um, public engagement and getting people connected to the draft plan before it you know becomes the plan to get comments and feedback. We know that the federal register process is not um, the best, and um, there are people on this call who can speak to that and the struggles there. Um, and so, you know, as we're moving forward, going in the system that we have, um, figuring out how to make it work as best as possible. So with that, I'll let Danielle um, say hi again and add anything she wants to add. All right, thank you everyone. Um, so first off, I, I used to do this at my old job, but if we can all sit up tall and put both of our feet on the ground, sitting up really tall, inhaling through our nose, and exhaling out our mouth. And then on the next inhale, bring your shoulders up to your ears. And then bring your shoulder blades down on the exhale. And one more time, inhale, shoulders to ears. And exhale, shoulder blades down. All right, well, it's been great. Thank you, everyone. I've um, I think it's been about a month and a half since I've started this work and it's been a big learning curve for me. I worked in the Western region as a coordinator for what used to be the landscape conservation cooperatives um, but, and they're still ongoing, but uh, I worked with a similar group with federal and state and indigenous organizations to come together to work on um, landscape scale uh, projects. So I had some background in working with diverse groups. So it's been, but this plan, it's, uh, it's been very interesting and it's been great working with the team. Um, so far we've, I've worked on emailing the federal subsistence regional advisory councils, which meet twice a year. Uh, I've emailed them flyers and right now one uh, of those meetings is currently going on and um, I've just been trying to go uh, trying to call in and share a little bit more about IARPIC. Those are really good groups to reach out to. The, the people on those councils are really involved with subsistence and know a lot about the land and I'm familiar with a lot of the rocks as I used to um, report out to them quite a bit. So it's been great to reconnect with a lot of different people in the, the regions. And now that they know I'm working in, in this with this group, they're becoming a little bit more aware um, of what that IARPIC, the Arctic Research Plan is and um, also how to get more involved. So there are the the rack meetings are one after another so there's two this week but um so those have been going well and then i've also been working with the IARPIC team along with john and kaya um, and we've drafted a letter to tribes that will also go to um, tribal ngos and corporations and so this is going this has been moved on to and we're waiting for approval 
that was a really great <laughs> practice for us to work on a, a letter. Um, and so, and we've also just been looking at the webinars and to try to make them more inclusive and, and the comment period by setting up a voicemail um, for people to call in. Me being in Shishmaraf has been an experience as well, just with uh, internet and phone services cutting in and out it really highlights the difficulty of getting input on some of these plans. So one of the webinars will also be a teleconference and we're just looking for possible partners and people to get the information out to the right people to be in, um, involved in that webinar. Uh, especially here, I had we had to order a satellite dish and um, it's just a different different world out here. So this has been a, a good reminder that if when we're seeking input from people specifically living in the regions, there's a limited band, bandwidth. Um, and then it's been great to see, uh, I've been working on other outreach materials and media with Liz and, and Meredith in this process, but um, I've been putting, putting together a calendar of events and so if, if anybody knows of any upcoming events that it would be great to share one of the flyers with or just the webinar information um, when the dates are, just let us know. Uh, right now we have the key, what the key events that are coming up, I think a lot of you guys are probably involved with. And, and so if you guys have any information or any meetings coming up that would benefit a flyer in this, that would be great. I think I've taken up too much time. Shannon. Thanks so much, Daniel. Meredith, what else is on our agenda today? Yep. Um, so now it's just open for questions and responses, I think, to um, Danielle's questions as well, just opening it up for general discussion. And if you need me to go back to any of the slides that Simon went through, I'm happy to do that. Just let me know. Okay, well, we'll be happy to take any questions or comments that folks have. Um, I know a few additional people joined, so welcome. Um, and just for those people, we just went through sort of what is IRPIC and information about the next article. There's some links in the chat uh, where you can find more information um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions or comments, this would be a great time to, to let us know either in the chat or feel free to just speak up. Can I say something? Um, this is kind of a half um, observation, half question, but um, I think what I noticed in the first or last couple go arounds with IRPIC is that, um, that a lot of the critique, and I know you guys have heard this a lot, is, um, you know, we're planning and planning. Um, how, um, where are, you know, where are the results in it? And, and, and I think that's such a huge task. I think moving forward, are you guys going to be a little bit more clear on letting folks know that, I mean, that's kind of the role of IRP because is to make these plans and it's kind of on the fed, you know, ed entities to actually implement it. And it's, it's too big of a task for you guys to kind of track all of that. Cause I know that you guys are already stretched thin with your, with your cur current, um, staff. Um, the reason why I asked that is because the resistance in the village is a lot where you know they people are going to look at it and say we only have time unless you have direct results to this we only are going to give our time to you unless you have direct results and when you look at the images that IRP that you guys have made um they are very they have a lot so much really good so much thought put into them and it took so much energy and a lot of input however i think when a lot of people look at those images they're looking for a more of a linear process you know plan results kind of thing and um and uh, the new image that you guys um have made um i was curious is, is it supposed to kind of mimic kind of a iceberg sort of thing um with some of it like the co like the um cross-cutting themes on the bottom is like under the water sort of under the surface or I, I didn't really understand that that image and i think and i'm just trying to share these um immediate um, responses just for like for the lay person, you know, in the villages and stuff for them that um, you guys might be reaching out to because I know that 
that's what I always was confused with was was how is this a linear process looking at those images and um and then a lot of the feedback I always thought that I that I saw uh, you know in, on the North Slope too was we're only going to give you our time unless you show us some results and then uh, that's such a huge um, stretch to to um, kind of promise for you know on behalf of the, all the federal entities so not really a question more of a comment but uh, kind of confused myself there a little bit. <laughs> Um, I'll take a shot at uh, responding to your uh, your comment. I guess it's a, good, it's a good one. And actually, in the in the implementation section in the new plan, and this is you know, something you should take a look at. There is a uh, a piece on um, on uh, results and reporting. Um, and so, so this is not really a linear process. The picture with the the iceberg with a peacock's tail to it is how I look at it. Um, and uh, it's really a hierarchical structure, Harry, um, you know, with the policy drivers at the top and then down to the current new priority areas and then uh, underpinning that, uh, these, uh, these foundational activities. So I would call this pretty diagram a, a, a hierarchical structure, not a linear structure. What needs to come out of any of the things that IOPIC does is a sense of what actual projects are being supported by and funded by, uh, this isn't all funded by, but they're uh, in some way by the federal government and how, um, and how people, uh, you know, what results come out of the projects that get funded rather than um, results out of sort of this graphic. Um, so the real the real test is is the actual projects uh, that do get funded, and um, this is something that we're to be blunt we're struggling with right now. Um, uh, is the plan is written at a very high level? The two new priority areas: sustainable economies and livelihoods, and risk management and hazard mitigation. Um, these are very new to IOPIC. Uh, in fact, we're not even, we, we, the only thing we know is we don't know who is really active in those areas. We know some people uh, and they really did help write the plan to get it to the point is, but you know, the, the first months of after the release of the plan, we're gonna be reaching out to, to, to create a team that have uh, ongoing work in these areas and also um, uh, uh, potentially new work that complements the ongoing work, right? So this is a five-year plan, and we'll have we'll build we'll give ourselves time to do the projects. But the other piece of of your comment, though, is that IOPIC needs to probably spend as, as much time um, communicating the outcomes of those projects as it does. Uh, building the projects in the first place. Um, and I know that different agencies do do this and some of them do it very well, you know, um, but uh, on the whole, IOPIC hasn't pushed that piece as well as it probably should. Uh, and you're right, it's a, it's sort of a resource thing. Um, I would say the, the best place to, to hear about the projects are these collaboration team meetings, right? Uh, you know, they, the typical uh, format is to get a, two or three people, uh, one or two people coming in uh, who are active in a project, and they will tell us about the results that they that they have. But clearly, those two new priority areas, and of course, community health, uh, community resilience and health, there has to be a significant uh, participation and uh, and involvement of the communities uh, that we we want to have those sustainable economies or we want to manage the risks that they face or of course it's their health uh, and their resilience so this is where this new foundational area um, co-production of knowledge and in, uh, indigenous-led research these are new areas for IOPIC and um, it will be key uh, I'm not saying that these things aren't key for priority of two but they're not quite key in the same way. It'll be absolutely vital that they are part of um, three of those four priority areas. Does that make 
Sorry. Is there um, is there any like um kind of wide incentives for federal agencies to help report properly to IRPIC so that they have those examples so that they're not having to kind of search um, after the fact? So maybe I'll punt that one to Sarah uh, because we do actually a fairly extensive job in creating a biannual report. Um, and I, and it, is, Sarah, is that on our website? Is that a public document? Yeah, we we do this in a number of ways. And yes, we have biennial reports and they are all on the about page on the right hand side. You can go back and visit any of them. And uh, Corey, specifically to your question, um, are there incentives? No, there's there's no there's uh, as a matter of fact, there may be, well, there are incentives in that agencies. Um, so John Pierce does a really beautiful job of whenever there is a USGS report, um, he posts it on the IRP Collaborations website. He gets the word out there. Um, it would be nice if more program managers have the time or the ability or the access to doing that. Um, but John does a really nice job of it, of that, I would say. Um, should we be doing more of it? Of course, we, we, and, and it is a resource question. One, one thing that we are doing this year, um, and my next meeting is about this, is we are developing an end of plan report. And it will be written for the layperson to summarize what we've learned from the past five years of implementing the current plan. Um, and we hope to get it out um, a month or two before this plan, um, the new plan comes out. Um, to answer these kinds of questions. What, what, you know, this investment is big. What, what have we learned from this investment? Um, so that is uh, something that we are working on. It won't be, um, you know, an extensive summary of every publication, but rather something that is written to highlight some of the, the major achievements that we have, uh, that we have to show for this investment. And I'll just add, um... Corey, thanks for this feedback. This is really helpful in, in thinking about how we can make the plan um, more applicable to people, not just in federal agencies. And um, I know, you know, once a year, the collaboration team leads get um, poor Meredith and Sarah and the other members of the secretariat have to start um, hounding us for uh, responses to what we have our like what we have are the team performance elements. And um, essentially these are like kind of the check boxes of things that the collaboration team should be doing. And um, I, I agree with you, Corey. Like, I feel like we always do so much and we create this kind of huge list of individual things that all the federal agencies have done, but then it just sits in a list, right? And the list is not easy to read. It's not easy to access. It's really hard to find what you might be interested in. Um, and so thinking more about how we can take advantage of some more science communication skills to, to better communicate this. I, this is something I think that IARPIC, um, we should look into investing in um, because we do do a lot, <laughs> but we're just not communicating that well at all, so. Yeah, hi, this is, uh, this is Ben. Um, kind of follow up on, on Corey's comment and how to, how to tie the results from some of these research projects back to uh, back to the foundational activities. Um, it might be kind of neat to have something similar to Fastlane. So after we publish a paper, say on an NSF funded project, um, we could also dump it at, at IARPIC somehow and, and tie it to the various foundational activities or the, uh, or the collaboration teams. Thanks, Ben. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that they want to create something similar to Fastlane <laughs> for anyone who is unfamiliar with it. It's NSF's um, proposal submission system and it's rather clunky, but I, I think what you're you're getting at is coming up with some kind of central database where we can um, start to compile these things. And I think what Sarah's point was trying to um, use the IARPA collaborations website um, as that resource. Um, and how do we incentivize people? Um, John does not seem to need incentive. He does it already. But how do we incentivize the rest of us to use it as a resource to um, communicate those results? And I think also, how do we make sure that people know that it's a resource? So 
Corey and Danielle, I don't know if, um, you know, your, the community members that you talk to, if they see IARPA collaborations as that resource, um, or if there's, and I can imagine they probably don't. Um, and, and so how do we better um, compile the things being posted on IARPA collaborations to better communicate those results to other people? Yeah, and I don't, I don't feel that by posting things on IARPIC is, is answers every question or, or fulfills every need or checks all the boxes. Um, I think it's just one way to share information. Um, but I think IARPIC has done a fantastic job of creating a culture of, of communication and, and getting back to people about results as you raised, um, Corey. Uh, so we, we as federal researchers and other researchers are learning through IARPIC how to do a better job at communicating. Um, you know, before the project starts, what the project's about, and then at the end as well. So um, that's what the principles are all about. But there's also, you know, many other avenues um, to learn how to do that better. And, uh, you know, I want to thank you and Danielle, among others, for, for providing that kind of information. Um, and that will go forward and, and is a big part of that foundational activity that you noted in the graphic um, that's called co-production of knowledge in Indigenous-led research, um, just to make sure that that's, that's in all the activities going forward as well. And just a real quick follow up. Um, I think it would, it would might help too is to have another layer kind of have because you click on that IARPIC link and you have to log in and you know for a few people like myself and others who are kind of involved in the research community we I you know I think I use IARPIC as a way to access you guys you know all together um, kind of access the federal entities but there's a lot of stuff that does get shared on there that I think would really benefit if there was, you know, a social media, or I, I don't know if there already is one, but like kind of loading that similar relevant data onto a social media somehow so that they didn't have to create a profile to access it. That, that might be a start, but that's another, another discussion for a different day. Any other comments or questions? I, I didn't want to uh, hijack, continue to hijack the conversation, but I did have one that was more relevant to the coastal resilience group, but not necessarily the IRPIC, and it kind of piggybacks on Daniel's comments about stakeholders that are relevant. So right now, um, and it has to, the reason why I wanted to raise it during this meeting was for the, you know, the coastal resilience, um, was that um, the Arctic Waterway Safety Council that was previously funded by Shell was a very, it turned into a very crucial meeting space for all the different co-management um, councils. So outside of AWC, outside of the Alaska Eskimo Whaling Commission meetings, they invited the Beluga co-management councils, the sea ice um, co-management councils, and all these co-management councils, um, Daniel, and stakeholders. And that was kind of a, for a few, few years there when Shell paid for it, it was a space for people, all the stakeholders to come together with all the marine operators, the industry, and the locals and shell had pulled that funding so they don't have funding anymore so like the aewc meetings is, has become more and more important as a space for people to come in and conduct crucial business that our marine scientists and our everybody has to has to kind of do however they're under underfunded as well um if this was brought up during the aicc the arctic iceberg coordinating committee meetings as an issue and it kept popping in my head that hey, maybe this is a chance for IRPIC to kind of get some interagency co collaboration together to think about how do we approach this um, issue and how do we create a meeting space and allow that um, um, communication to happen. I know that there's multiple different types of funding out there at NSF and others to create kind of, you know, meeting spaces with in Indigenous locals, but this is an area that's extremely relevant right now. And it might be something that the Coastal Resilience team wants to think about. The second thing was that I wanted to ask about how how is IARPIC going to respond to the executive order um, that was put out um, less than a month ago that's requiring federal agencies to really ramp up their <clears throat> plans to engage in tribal folks and to also obviously clearly report those plans. And I know that all you guys, I'm sure that many of you guys on this call have, are thinking about it in your own agencies, but I was curious if there's going to be an IARPIC effort to kind of combine um, combine some of those forces to try to make a better effort in that area. So Corey, in terms of your first comment about the um, Alaska Waterway Safety Committee, I think that's um, 
a great idea to think of the coastal resilience space as a resource. And certainly John and Amy and Meredith and I can can um, get together and talk about what we can do to support those conversations further. I know I benefit greatly from listening into those um, conversations to better inform my work and um, know that they've been struggling to find um, a place. So I think that's a great idea and I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, in terms of the executive order, I, for IARPIC, I'll leave that to Sarah, um, but I know all of the individual agencies have, I believe, 90 days to respond to the executive order to come up with um, a plan. And so I don't, I know all the um, individual federal agencies will be responding. That is, at least at NSF, above my pay grade um, that will be coming from our office of the director. Um, but Sarah, I don't know if there are any plans for IARPIC or is that really up to the individual agencies that are involved in IARPIC to respond to that? Yeah, thanks for that. They do have 90 days to respond and we're in, we're, we're about uh, 15, 20 days into that right now. So agencies are um, kind of running through their processes right now. Um, there is no immediate plan for IARPIC to uh, try to bring all that together, but there is a longer term plan um, and discussions going on in staff group about how to um, make this information more accessible to the people who need to get to it. Um, and and uh, so when the new plans are out um, and the uh, new regulations are set within agencies to respond to the executive order, um, you know, we hope over the longer term that we'll be able to um, work with the agencies to have a, a single reference point for that. Um, but, but that's a longer term discussion and, and the agencies are really busy right now with that 90 day deadline. But these are, Corey, I really appreciate these uh, questions and these comments because they are um, extraordinarily helpful in, in uh, reminding us what uh, to remain focused upon. And, and so I, I find them to be very helpful. And I know I don't need to remind you, but I'll just remind the entire group when the federal register notice does come out, there is a section on implementation along with the entire plan um, that you know, these kind of comments are gonna be really, really informative and helpful when we, um, when we sit down with them um, when, the, when the register closes. So um, I encourage you to, to make your comments. Thanks. So we're coming up on the end of our time. John, would you like to, to wrap us up or would you like me to do that? Yeah, go ahead, Colleen. Um, well, I really appreciate Simon and Danielle for coming to, to speak with us and give us an update. Um, this might be Simon's last IARPA collaboration team meeting. I'm not sure if he's planning on calling in. Um, so I would like to ask everyone to give him a little round of applause and your reaction to, to send him off <laughs> in retirement soon to celebrate all of his contributions to um, IARPIC um, during the course of his career. And Danielle, we're so happy to have you um, helping us um, you know, thread a delicate needle um, for IARPIC to get better engagement on that side. Um, so I really appreciate this conversation. Please feel free to reach out. Keep an eye out for um, the Federal Register notice and um, hopefully we'll be able to have you guys be able to provide more formal feedback in the future. So have a good rest of your day. And I guess I'll say congratulations to NASA for just landing their rover on Mars. Oh, they did. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about science communication. Um, <laughs> so have a good rest of your day, all. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.